Good morning, my friends. It's Days with Jordan the Lion. Well, good morning, buddy. Today, our vlog is actually a little more in the evening. So you're going over to Pollyanna's house to hang out today. And I'm going to be not too far away over at the DeMille Lasky Barn that is now a Hollywood Heritage Museum because we are going for a special dedication tonight. Days with Jordan the Lion. And this guy going to Pollyanna's begins now. All right, here he goes. Well, Pollyanna's out for a walk, so we're meeting up with her. Look at him. Hi! All right, I just had to stop in and get some lunch. I know I've said before that I'm pretty much fed up with Subway because I feel like everything tastes the same, but I, I'll take that back when it comes to the chicken Caesar rotisserie wrap on the spinach wrap. I'm a big fan of that guy, so I've been having those. It's that time of the night for the Hollywood Studio Museum exhibit. Remember when I went to the house that Barbara Stanwyck built and that Jack Oakey lived in for a very, very long time called Oak Ridge? That ties into what we're gonna do now. Well, here we are. This is a great night. I've really been looking forward to this for about a month now. How this all came about is if you remember, um, probably a month or so ago, I made a video about Barbara Stanwyck's house and Jack Oakey's house. It's now called Oak Ridge. And Jack Oakey lived there for decades. And when he passed away, the house was donated to USC. Now it is owned by the Valley. Now here's the great thing about it. We got to see the inside of Jack Oakey's life, and there's a charitable foundation that actually keeps his memory alive. Tonight, my favorite museum here in Hollywood, the Hollywood Heritage Museum, this actually used to be the DeMille Lasky Barn. They filmed the very first full-length movie here called The Squaw Man, directed by Cecil B. DeMille in the teens, the 19s. Now, it's one of the best museums in Hollywood, and tonight they're dedicating a wing of it to the Jack Oakey Gallery. Now my introduction to Jack Oakey really was seeing him in The Great Dictator with Charlie Chaplin. A f movie made famous by Chaplin speaking in it, you know. Charlie Chaplin was known for his being silent and in this movie he was speaking and he was portraying Adolf Hitler. And opposite him was the great Jack Oakey portraying Mussolini. Now. This says a lot about Jack Oakey as a comedian because Jack Oakey gets many opportunities where he has the screen all to himself and he really holds his own. Now Jack Oakey basically, you know, was one of the great singing comedians of the 30s, 40s, 50s and he was performing all the way up into the early 70s when he was, I think in his late 60s. Pretty cool, he was on TV shows doing things like that. He starred in movies with Shirley Temple, uh, Joan Blondell, Lucy, Carol Lombard, I mean, you name it, and Jack Oakey was in it. One of the most lovable people in Hollywood history, and tonight, he's gonna be part of this museum. Now, you may remember when I went to that house that um, I had actually shown a few images inside that house that I probably wasn't supposed to show and through a different bunch of different channels basically the people that owned the copyright to those images were put in touch with me and when we talked on the phone we actually got along really well they liked what i'm trying to do with my channel and they are the ones who invited me out to this so thank you so much to the jack oakey and victoria horn oakey charitable foundation for your new friendship and for inviting me out here tonight here tells a little bit of the history of the great Lasky DeMille barn, there it is. Now back in those days, obviously, they didn't have the light set up to be able to film at night, so they did all the filming in this barn during the day, and they, uh, they originally had had this over on the corner of Sunset and, or not Sunset, but a little north of Sunset on Vine Street, and at one point, there was, you know, talk of what do we do with this barn, and they had moved it originally over to the Paramount Studios lot, and it was a, I believe, acting as a physical fitness gym for the employees for a while, even 
um, at one point being put on the back lot and maybe even think they were building sets and things in it. And then people realized how historic and how important this was and they had it moved over here across from the Hollywood Bowl and now it's a uh, basically a silent movie and early Hollywood history museum. Well, this was Mr. DeMille's office. I have vlogged this before, but if you have the chance to come and hang out in Cecil B. DeMille's office more than once in your life, don't be an idiot. You take it. Now, you know, I love the work of Cecil B. DeMille, and when you read about what a... Sometimes he was almost considered a, a tyrant to work with. There's that joke inside Blazing Saddles where they make reference to how many men would die on the production of a DeMille picture, but back then it was important to him to get what he wanted, get the get the shots, and you know, I guess safety was a little less of a concern. And you know what's great, I didn't know the story behind this typewriter, but they just told me here at the museum that that's maybe the most interesting piece in here because um, most of the things that are in here were de actually donated by the DeMille family. But that typewriter specifically came with the very first secretary for Cecil B. DeMille and um, she, they said she had really good job security because she was the only person in the company that owned a typewriter and that was her typewriter from way back when the Squaw Man was filmed. Oh, and this is great. They were just telling me that this TP was, um, they, they gathered up everybody that was part of the crew and everything for the Squaw Man for a 50th anniversary and this was the place setting. This TP. How cool is that? that old telephone in there. All right, now let's go see what we actually came here for. Jack Oakey. Now this model actually kind of shows you how the original property was laid out. This would have, uh, this would have been Vine Street going up and down here. So right now where the Equinox is over in uh, Hollywood on Vine, that's where the original barn was located. Now I mentioned to you guys last week when I was driving back from Paso Robles I was considering going to Guadalupe Dunes because I had been there before but I didn't get to see any of the relics from when they filmed the Ten Commandments out there by Cecil B. DeMille. And here are some of the relics. Basically what happened was, if, if you don't know the story, Cecil B. DeMille filmed the Ten Commandments out there on the dunes, Was um, had an agreement that he would remove all of the sets but once they were done filming he realized it was going to be too cost effective and too much work to remove them so he just dynamited the sets and covered them over with sand. People didn't know about it for gosh almost a hundred years and then someone was reading um, Cecil B. DeMille's autobiography and he mentions in there that if someone should happen to be digging around out in Guadalupe and sees you know things that look like Egyptian relics he hopes they won't think that the Egyptians made it all the way this far west. So the uh, the person who found that in the book, ended up getting funding to do an excavation and they found a lot of the stuff, a lot of the sets out there. So some of it's still out there and then these are all wardrobe and things from the Ten Commandments. And they're going to show some Jack Oakey work tonight, which is going to be great. And if you're like me and you love Douglas Fairbanks, then you'll love seeing the Douglas Fairbanks wardrobe right here. It's from the Iron Mask. Very cool. And right up here is where the uh, the Oki Gallery sign is going to be, so this is going to be great. We have a few moments before the event starts, so I'm just walking around more of the museum. Isn't this great? There's the address, that's where it originally was, 6284 Selma. I'm gonna get a couple of these great postcards for you guys and check this out. They actually have some souvenir mugs, so I'm gonna get this for one of you guys. I love this in the gift shop up here. They have an old recreation of Schwab's and the Warner Brothers theater sign. 
You guys know me, I love to support the causes that I vlog, so I picked up a, uh, a $5 coffee mug and four postcards. Uh, Highwood Heritage Museum and Highwood Heritage, the Board of Directors, is pleased to uh, announce the dedication of the Jack and Victoria Corn O'Keefe Gallery. Uh, I speculated earlier that I'm probably one of the few people in the room that actually met both Jack and Victoria wow. when I was 19. Well, oh, you, you of course. No, no, did you ask him? Did no, no, I said I was probably oh, one of the only people. No, I never met But I love how it went back to you again. That was. But <laughs> 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 I actually. The, I had lived down the street from where uh, Jack and Victoria lived, and I would run into them in a restaurant nearby. So that's, that's when I met them when I was 19, which was a couple of days ago. <laughs> um, and I'd like to ask David Sonny from the foundation to join me, please. Uh, that's who invited us. There you go, words for us. I, uh, I have to, seriously, my. Um, I get to give money to, and there's some people here from those institutions, to film and theater students. Uh, we have a children's musical theater camp for really young kids. Uh, we support College of the Canyons, USC School of Cinematic Arts, Chapman University, Dodge Film School, um, Syracuse University, uh, Granada Hills Charter High School. We do Sepulveda Middle School, where they now have film classes. And the greatest thing about it is that it's all comedy. We, uh, Jack Epps, who penned Top Gun and a few other movies, uh, holds the chair for comedy in, in uh, comedy and writing at USC School of Cinematic Arts. And it was the first chair in comedy anywhere in the world. And then they've just dedicated one to Robin Williams. So they're in really good company. but. Um, my, really my second favorite thing in the world is to give all this money away every year to all these kids. What's your first? First, one, <laughs> first favorite thing? Is to give away somebody else's money <laughs> to all these kids. And it's really a, lot of, really a lot of fun. And my job is basically very simple. Jack said give the money to the kids. I never met Jack. And Mrs. Oki said keep Jack's name alive. So. It's really simple for me to do that, and um, almost every school and institution that, that we've supported or funded has uh, abided by what we want. And I'll just tell you very briefly, the, um, if a student wants to apply for a, an Oki scholarship, they have to watch a Jack Oki or a Victoria Horn Oki movie. Now, most of the universities, and there are people here from College of the Canyons, we give them money to buy DVDs for their library so the kids don't have to go out and buy them. So they watch a movie, they write a brief essay about it, and then they take one scene in the movie and write what they would do, whatever their, their uh, discipline is, that's lighting or wardrobe, how they would have changed that scene to make it better. They turn all that into the dean, and then that, in combination with their attitude, their aptitude, and everything else they're doing, that's how the scholarships are awarded. The good thing about it for the universities is they already have the money. So it's not like they have to call up and go, okay, we've, yeah. here's the money. And um, it works, works out really, really well. And um, Jack's movies are seen, which keeps his name alive. And the kids get the money, which is, let me take that back, they get scholarships. The first year, <laughs> we gave a chunk of change to a university who decided to award all of these awards to their seniors and gave them cash. Mm. I said, that doesn't work. They're all going to Juilliard. I mean, what are you going to, oh yeah, you got a point there. So the students get credit on their scholarships or on, on their uh, term project and that's what we do. So it's a lot of fun and thank you all for coming tonight. It's really um, great to finally be able to do this. We actually, we didn't have any time to, to test the banner, so we may actually be living the it's all in fun slogan of the, uh, of the foundation. So. <laughs> They've been yanked by chain for five years now. <laughs> yank the string. Okay, ready on three. One, One two, three. What I'd like to do, and maybe overstepping my boundaries, is kind of declare 
that every May 30th would be Jack Oakey Day at the Hollywood Heritage. And we're going to give you $1,000 to buy cake. So every year you get your regular donation plus a grand every May 30th. So there you are. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. There, there. Right, <laughs> go ahead. You just go ahead. You just like. <laughs> Uh, the classic movie prize. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, there. That one Almost. <laughs> Jack, Jack Oakey would be proud. Yeah. Lead balloon. Reply. <laughs> this is how they do it at the Smithsonian. Uh, exactly. That's the most professional academy. Okay, can we have that? Hey, David, put the spear down. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. You have to look to the camera. You do that. Spear and camera. <laughs> All the time until the Look at all the hats and the uh, the shields that the guards have, and then look right here. Now they're going to show some classic Jack Oakey films. And that chest is the one seen in the background right here of Ten Commandments. And I always love seeing these two here. So take a look around. Inside this barn, in the very, very earliest days of Hollywood, the very, very first feature length film would have been filmed inside of here. And here we are, over, literally over a hundred years later, watching movies in it. It's still here, still exists. And I also have been invited to some future Oki events that I'll tell you guys about as we get closer. This chair right here it says is from Cecil B. DeMille's The Cheat, made in 1915. And recreational parks, not, and I'm just speaking freely, not really being in the home development business or the restoration business, um, isn't really too excited about restoring a home. So friends of Oak Ridge, was formed to do fundraising and to get money to pay to keep the home open. We have an event planned there in September, which we'll all hear about later, but uh, to fund some repairs at the house, it's going to be very expensive. But my vision was, uh, number one, to take the trophy room uh, with all the pictures and all that and kind of try to rebuild that to what it was and then uh, have uh, film classes for students, make it a sort of a cultural education center. So it's really got some purpose instead of just being a house. But there are tours that are available of the house. And they're every, almost like every month now, aren't they? And just one closing remark. Uh, Paul Williams uh, was an African-American architect. And early on, the city um, didn't really recognize his talents. So everything that was done, by, I don't forget the man's name, who was it? Robert King. Robert. Yeah, had to sign all the papers and all that kind of. Well, we're still researching that. Sorry, to come. well, this is what I heard from Mrs. Oakey, okay, so yeah. it's ju just what I heard, and I could be making that up too, you can't verify it. But <laughs> um, he also designed the uh, restaurant at LAX, you know, with the, and the Brown Derby and a few other homes in the area. He was, yeah, and there's a building at the corner of Beverly and Rex, Beverly Boulevard, and I think maybe Rexford. It's got all, um, shutters on it, and that was his, his forte. The home has a, a small cellar, almost a basement, steel girders, it, it is, it, it's basically shockproof. There was hardly any damage after the 94 earthquake. It starts at, I believe, $25 for seniors, $40 for individuals, and it goes all the way up from there. And basically, it just helps us keep the lights on. We're all volunteers here. Uh, none of us get paid. We just do it because we love this building, and we love the organization. We're a preservation organization. We're a museum. We also do Cinecon, as you know. So we have a lot of community outreach, and we have events here. Uh, every month except when the Hollywood Bowl is in season. So we do evenings at the barn. Uh, we do um, special events like this one tonight. So anyway, if you'd like to find out more about us, get on our email list. 
um, find about our perks of being a member. Uh, we do a lot of members only events, that sort of thing. So what we wanted to do after the reveal is run something quite special. And this is from your Jack Oki archive. And we're gonna have you narrate the, the films. It, it runs just over 30 minutes long. And it's, uh, it's very rare. And if you haven't seen it before, you're in for, for a big treat. But thanks for coming. Thank you again for oh, that. No, no, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. We owe you a, a, a debt of uh, gratitude. And, and it's a great place to support. And plus, um, again, it's not my money, but the perks really nice because I like the big company. Well, we watched this really great video that was actually made by Victoria Hornoki um, back when her and Jack were alive. And it was really great because it was kind of like a day in their life at their home, walking around, showing what they did and everything. And so I can't show that to you now. But some point in the future, I'll show you snippets of it, and uh, it'll be a little special surprise. That's all I can say. I can't show it to you just yet, but I will show you in the future. And look who's back here hiding behind the movie screen that we just watched everything on. This awesome mannequin of... Actually, that looks like a wax figure of Buster Keaton. Gotta love that. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was his first camera. Uh, let's see. From the estate of Buster Keaton in Beverly Hills and donated by Portland Mason, whose parents, James and Pamela Mason, owned the estate for over 40 years. The Keaton estate was later occupied at different times by Cary Grant and Marlena Dietrich as well. Very cool. And if you saw my, uh, my vlog on old Keaton Studios, that's one of the stories that's really cool also about James Mason is that when he bought that house from basically Buster Keaton's wife, um, Talmadge, he found down in the basement a bunch of old movies that in some cases were the only copies of Buster's movies that still existed. So thanks to James Mason finding those movies, they still exist now. So we're going to call it a day here. And... Uh, like I said, we've been invited to something in the future, and we'll reconvene with Jack Oakey then. But if you want to see some of his artifacts, go to the Valley Relics Museum. I've been there before. They have a lot of his stuff has been donated there. Well, that was a lot of fun, and I just, you know, like I said before, I love the fact that this barn still exists, and that they still have events here, and that it's still a functioning museum. You can't come every day, but you can come on the weekends. It's open on Saturdays and Sundays. Hi, buddy. Oh, look who's here! Well, good evening, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see the Jack Oakey and Victoria Horn Oakey Gallery opening. And we'll be back in the future. And we'll be doing some functions with them in the future. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Tonight's shout out goes out to Shannon. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all later. Have a great night and goodbye.